Jeremy Diamond reporting there. Well, Yakov Kotz is a senior columnist for the Jerusalem Post and a fellow at the Jewish People Policy Institute. Yakov, good to see you. Uh, he's also the author of Shadow Strike, Inside Israel's Secret Mission to Eliminate Syrian Nuclear Power. Yakov, I want to start by asking you, you know, right-wingers like Smotrich, you know, pushing for sovereignty, illegal annexation of the West Bank. This is nothing new, but how much support is there within Israel for this? Well, I think that in Israel, there are in some circles, definitely within the right wing, there's a feeling that right now with Trump's return to office, there is an opportunity for Israel to gain once again some strategic benefits. It looks back at the four years of Trump's first term in office, when he moved the embassy to Jerusalem, recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And there were talks at the time between the prime minister and the president about the prospect of annexation or Israel's application of sovereignty also in the West Bank, territory that is still disputed ever since Israel conquered that land back in 1967. So the right wing in Israel definitely feels like there is a uh, windfall and there's an opportunity right now to try to gain some of these benefits. It'll be a question to see whether Trump is willing to give his support for that to happen. Well, in the past, Trump has said that he is, quote, not a big fan of Israel's settlements in the occupied West Bank. But, but could he be persuaded to change his mind and, and give uh, you know, Israel his blessing? Well, I think it really will depend on maybe the bigger picture. What else is that play here, right? The way it, was, it, it potentially was supposed to go down last time was, you recall, Anna, back in 2020, President Trump outlined his what he called the peace to prosperity, what he often also referred to as the deal of the century, a peace deal that he was trying to create between Israel and the Palestinians. And on the one hand, the deal basically embraced past uh, concepts such as the establishment of a Palestinian state, dividing up part of the West Bank. But what it did not call for was the uh, demolition or evacuation of Israeli settlements. And it basically said that Israelis would be able to remain inside those homes that Israel has built over the years throughout the West Bank. In that case, Israel could potentially make it once again the argument if Israeli homes are staying, then we should at least apply land to those parts of the West Bank. Obviously, I think in the right, and Bitzal Smutrich, the leader of one of the more far right parties in the Israeli parliament, is calling for an application of Israeli sovereignty over the entire territory, so not just where the Israeli settlements are, but that opens the door for some sort of negotiation, maybe and a compromise on both sides that would allow for something like this to happen. Smotrich said that Trump's election win brings, quote, an important opportunity for Israel. What does he mean by that? Well, I think he feels that after four years of the Biden administration, that for him personally, at least, they were not willing to engage with him. They were not willing to meet with him. And they basically uh, cut him out of any dialogue between Israel and the United States because of his more uh, radical views on the right wing spectrum here in Israel. He feels that now with a conservative movement and the Republican Party now coming into office, there's an opportunity for them to be able to work together and maybe achieve some of these objectives. It's important to remember, Anna, that there are members of the Trump administration who might be coming in, definitely of the past administration. We saw that, for example, with the former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, big advocates and proponents of Israel's presence in what is referred to as Judea and Samaria in, in, in the West Bank. So there is a hope on in that side, in some churches' circles, that there will be people who will come back to office and hold similar views. But I think that Israel and at least the prime minister for the time being has his eyes set on, on I want to call it necessarily the bigger prize, but yes, the bigger prize, which is Iran, and a way to align opinions and views between Jerusalem and Washington on how to confront Iran. We saw that Prime Minister Netanyahu has said that he's already spoken with President-elect Trump three times over the last few days, maybe the most any foreign leader has spoken with the with the president. He's dispatched his strategic affairs minister to meet with Trump. They sat for a couple hours just the other day. So there's a lot of alignment and dialogue that's taking place right now between Israel and not just the Biden administration, but also the incoming Trump administration. And I would argue that it has a lot to do more with Iran than anything to do with the Palestinians at the moment.
Well, well, on that issue, Netanyahu has previously called Trump the best friend Israel has ever had in the White House. I mean, what is the prime minister hoping to get out of Trump in his term? Well, as you recall, in the first term back in May of 2018, Donald Trump pulled out of what was known as the JCPOA, basically the 2015 Iran nuclear deal that Barack Obama had reached with Iran. And on the one hand, Israel was very supportive of that. Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, a couple months afterwards, boasted that it was because of his convincing that Donald Trump pulled out of that deal back in May of 2018. So. The vacuum, though, that was created, that's where things get a little more controversial. Was it good? Did it allow Iran to plow forward with its nuclear program, or did it st help stop Iran? But now there's an opportunity. And I think that Israel definitely feels that there's an opportunity to align with the Trump administration. We're seeing some hawkish appointments there of different officials who are hawks, definitely on Iran. And Israel feels that this might be an opportunity to crack down with more what, what has been called crippling sanctions on the Iranians, but also if needed, maybe military action. We've seen just last month Israel's strike against Iran, taking out its surface to air missile systems, the, the famous S-300 that had been supplied to the Iranians by the Russians. Basically, Iran is more vulnerable today than it has been in the past when it comes to defending its own nuclear facilities. And I think that Israel feels that there is an opportunity to coordinate very closely with the incoming administration and take advantage potentially of this opportunity with Iran on the ropes, maybe get it to finally once and for all stop its race towards a nuclear capability. Yakov Kotz, uh, we appreciate your insights. Thanks for joining us. A group of eight aid.